Hello everyone! Today's video will be helpful if you're interested in volcanoes, lava, or volcanic geology. The Earth contains an enormous variety of volcanic rocks, all of which crystallized from lava. Not all lavas are the same, and differences in their chemistry can dramatically affect the rocks they form. This is why geologists classify volcanic rocks according to their chemical makeup. Today, the most commonly used classification scheme is TAS, Total Alkalis versus Silica. We can understand it by drawing a graph. Along the horizontal axis, we measure the amount of silica present inside a rock of interest. Silica is found in the pure form as quartz, a very common mineral. In volcanic rocks, silica is also contributed by olivine, nepheline, pyroxenes, amphiboles, and micas. It is an abundant compound, to say the least. Along the vertical axis, we measure the combined amounts of sodium oxide and potassium oxide in the rock of interest. Sodium and potassium are among the highly reactive alkali metals, which sit on the left side of the periodic table. That's why this graph is called a total alkalis versus silica diagram. The actual measurements used for this scheme are reported in weight per cent. For example, a rock weighing 2 kilograms that contains 1 kilogram of silica would be reported as 50% silica by weight, because 1 is 50% of 2. The weights of sodium oxide and potassium oxide are usually much smaller than that. In case you're wondering, it is desirable to measure oxide weights rather than element weights. These particular elements are not found by themselves in nature. They are always bonded to something else, and in volcanic rocks that something else is typically oxygen. Over the years, total alkalis and silica have been measured for many, many rock samples. We now have a good idea of where different volcanic rocks plot on this graph. In this corner, we find basalt, the most common one. It underlies the Earth's oceanic crust and covers substantial areas on land as well. Over here we have dacite, a rock that contains much more silica than basalt. The lava that produces dacite is quite sticky because of its silica content, and this makes it explosive. The eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980 produced large amounts of dacite. Phonolite is a less common rock that contains a high proportion of alkali metals. It has been known to crystallize from lava that became stuck inside volcanic vents, forming huge plugs of rock. The Devil's Tower in Wyoming, USA, is a plug that remained standing, even after the surrounding volcano was eroded. In between those end members, many more rock types can be identified. They cover a spectrum from silica-poor to silica-rich, or from alkaline down to sub-alkaline. Thanks to the TAS scheme, it's possible to measure just a few components of a volcanic rock and immediately see what it is. However, there are some limitations. Perhaps the most important one is the assumption that one body of lava produces one rock type. This is not always the case. For instance, there is a rock found near my hometown that was formed by the mixing of two different lavas. On the TAS diagram it plots in this region, so you might be tempted to call it tracheandesite. However, that name does not reflect the rock's origin by mixing, so it has a different unique name, kaiwakite. It appears to have crystallized from a combination of basalt and phonolite lavas. That's all for this presentation. Although it was a quick one, I hope you found it interesting. Please let me know in the comments if you would like to know more about volcanic rocks, how they form, or how they are investigated. You can also subscribe to my channel to show your support and catch the next video. Thank you for watching, and good luck with your studies.